there is a lot to do here at Universal Studios, so let's talk about how and where you should spend your time. Let's go through the 20 must-dos at Universal Studios Florida. Universal has tons of exciting shows, rides, and eats, but it can be hard to see and do everything in just one day. So we are going to talk about our 20 favorite things to do here at Universal so you can help figure out your priorities for your next trip to Universal Studios. Now I won't lie to you friends, it's a little bit too me gloomy weather-wise here today, but I am always super excited to be in Universal. It is so fun and it's honestly pretty different from Disney World. So we're going to talk about my 20 favorite things to do and I even asked our team for their help. So this is like a full all ears net, team consensus, these are our 20 must do's. And we are going to start at one of the newest things to do here in Universal. Okay, so one thing you absolutely need to do when you're here at Universal is head over to VillainCon. VillainCon Minion Blast is the newest ride here in Universal Studios and it is a shooting game where you get to go into the world of villain con and see if you have what it takes to become a true villain. Now, that's not the best part about this, right? There is an app aspect to it, which is really new and exciting. So on the Universal app, you actually get to create a profile and go through and keep a lifetime score of what you do on this game. So not just the one time, it's not like shooting games in the past where you have your one score from the one game. You get to keep a lifetime score, do different missions, and have different experiences every single time. This is honestly my favorite ride in Universal right now. It is just, I don't know, it's different, it's fun, and it's something that has a rewritability that I don't think a lot of rides do have. If you want to learn more about the ride itself, I have a full video up on the channel right now all about it, and honestly, I'm gonna go hop in line. So next up on your must-dos here in Universal, you absolutely need to come choose your song on Rip Ride Rocket, and that's that's coming from me, but this is a must-do. This is an outdoor coaster that goes upside down. It takes you on a 90 degree angle straight up and you even get to choose your songs. But what's really cool about this is they actually just redid the song selections. And in the past, there were quite a few. You chose your genre and then you got to choose, but you didn't have that much time while the ride was running. You sat down, tried to choose your ride and then you would go. But they actually just changed that. So they still have those secret song options, which you can type on, if you press the logo, uh, it'll ask for a code and then there are different codes for secret songs, but they actually just updated it to five new songs which you can see here on the screen and for me as an ABBA fan this has been the best change in a while I don't personally love roller coasters like this but I will ride this one just because the songs are so much fun and it kind of is like a customizable experience so we've talked two of my favorite must-do rides now let's talk some snacks and some eats which are all actually still here pretty much at the entrance so next up on our must-do's, I think you need to grab a freeze ray pop. And if you've been around since this has opened, if you've seen any of our videos lately, um, I don't call them that. I don't like that that's the name, but they are delicious. Okay, so freeze ray pops, which I refer to as Papanana. I understand Papanana is the popcorn that's banana flavored. I really don't, I don't care. I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I don't care. I like calling these Papananas because they're freeze ray, they're pops, they're popsicles, pop in then. So freeze ray pops is specialty um, ice pops or popsicles. And you can actually get a handful of flavors here. They have the Minion, which is the blue banana, Gru, which is with Nutella, and the Vector, which is orange cream, which is what I'm trying today. If you're not into any of those, they actually have mango, strawberry, coconut, blueberry, lemonade, cotton candy, cheesecake, lemon mint, and cookies and cream too. Full honesty, I love these. They are so good, they melt so fast. Like they are hard to enjoy sometimes during the hot days, but they are so worth it. This is the first time I've gotten Vector one. It's the orange creamsicle, so I'm gonna try it. It's actually really good. So normally I get the Minion one because I love the banana. It's just different and I really love the flavors to it. This one is really good. The brew is really tasty for chocolate. They just are different and I really appreciate them. And I'm gonna finish this before we move on. So Minion Cafe is also new and just opened with the rest of Minion Land uh, just a few months ago actually. And it is the quick service here in Minion Land. So this quick service is immaculately themed inside and you can get things like chop chop salad, crispy cauliflower, secret salmon, noodle bowls, honeymoon soup. I mean, there's a lot of really good stuff here. And I've even been here like when I'm not here for work, I have been here for fun because it is actually really tasty. 
they also have a pickup window if you want to do a mobile order down here to the right back towards the freezeway pops uh, because it can get pretty crowded because of the minions and the food quality it can get pretty busy so they even have a mobile pickup which I really love now this is a must do honestly for a few reasons a anything that's new I think it's fun to try at least once and it's actually pretty good quality food which sometimes with theme parks is a little touch and go but if you want to see a full review, Quincy has actually eaten everything here on her own. Um, and you can check out that full review on the channel. And this is the real Papa Nana. But it's not my Papa Nana. And it's not on the must -dos. Next must-do, we're back on the rides kick. We're gonna talk about Revenge of the Mummy. Revenge of the Mummy is an indoor roller coaster themed all around the Mummy movie starring uh, Academy Award winner Brendan Fraser. The Mummy curse is real. It has cursed the movie set and now you're impacted by the curse too. It is a lot of fun. Spoiler alert, part of it goes backwards and it's just different, unique, and also Brendan Fraser's in it. And they have a single rider line that actually works really, really well. Uh, and I highly recommend checking that out. If you are with a group that's willing to be separated or you just want to save some time, it's a great single rider line. Next up, if you're looking for things you just have to do at Universal, you need to consider singing with the Blues Brothers or even Marilyn Monroe because you can do that here. Universal has some incredible, incredible entertainment. Things like Sing It, appearing live with the Blues Brothers, Marilyn Monroe and the Diamonds, Vamos. There is so much incredible entertainment. And frankly, it's one of the best parts about Universal. Personally, I love seeing Marilyn Monroe come out and sing with her diamonds. She does a photo meet and greet after her performance. It's just a lot of fun and it's different. And a lot of the live entertainment here is really incredible, especially with the choreography in particular. I know Quincy loves Vamos and it's just different. It's quite a bit different from Disney's live entertainment in the sense that the shows are a lot shorter. There's really not a lot of seating. I like that they're short actually because it doesn't take a lot of your park day to enjoy that live entertainment. Now, if you've been doing a lot of rides and a lot of shows, you might want a good break. So another must do for us is gonna be grabbing a bite at Finnegan's right here behind me. Finnegan's Bar and Grill is actually an Irish themed uh, kind of bar and grill, it's in the name. Uh, this is a sit down restaurant where you can find authentic Irish American food, ale and spirits. But what's really cool about this one is it's looks like a bar inside but then it's also created to look like a movie set so you see some false walls you see the ceilings um, have open sections because that's what it really looks like when you're filming on a movie set um, and it's just neat it's a good experience Quincy and I actually just ate here yesterday when we were filming the secrets to the best day ever at Universal and we really loved it now we know that sitting down um, at a table service restaurant in any theme park is kind of a big chunk of your day but sometimes it's really nice to be able to just relax and sit down and this is a great option to do that now, as we're walking over to our next official must-do, I really want to mention kind of one of my own personal must-dos. Um, just not a, you know, not a part of the official list, but just something that I really want you guys to know, and that's you must skip the Fast and Furious ride. It's not good. I would not tell you in earnest to go wait on that ride unless you just love those movies. It's not the best ride. And is that a formal must-do? No, um, but am I sharing that with you guys as my friends? Yes. Another must do um, for any theme park or anywhere or any vacation ever is bring rain gear because <laughs> it's raining. And I only had this massive umbrella in my car. I forgot all of my rain gear and found this uh, in the back of my car. So shout out to my dad, who's probably the one who left it there, honestly at this point years ago, but thanks. We finally have made it over to London Bay. Welcome. We're really excited. I know that you are probably shocked it took us this long to get back here, but there's lots of must do, so let's get into it, right? So another must do if you're here in London, babe, is you've got to go to Hogwarts, if you can. That actually doesn't apply to everyone. So you might be confused when I say that that doesn't apply to everybody, but if you can, you need to head into King's Cross, uh, which is the train station that takes you all the way to platform nine and three quarters, all the way into Hogwarts. So this side is actually more popular than the other side over in Islands of Adventure, because this one is kind of like when Harry goes to school. You get that same experience, it's a little bit different when you come back across. The ride is incredible either way, um, but not everybody can do it because you actually need a park hopper ticket to be able to do this. This side is actually really, really neat. You get to see a lot of your favorite characters on this ride. You get to ride the Hogwarts Express. You see people like George and Fred. Hagrid's there. It's a lot of fun. I really love it. Now, it is a lengthy experience if you wait in line. So right now, it's only about 40 minutes. 
um, but traditionally you can find the same ride for the most part from Islands of Adventure back here for about 10 minutes. Um, it just really depends on if you want that experience. Hedwig is in line on this side, so there are a lot of little nods that you won't get to see if you come back the other way, but it's a lot of fun, and if you're able to, you, you have to go to Hogwarts. So for our next must-do's, we are actually going to see a little bit of magic, and we are going to leave London and head into Diagon Alley. Welcome to the Wizarding World, and I'm gonna put my umbrella back up. So a lot of our must-dos are actually going to be back here in the Wizarding World because, let's be honest, this is one of the best parts about Universal Studios. So one of the coolest things about the Wizarding World is this girl right up here at the top. This is the dragon. You can actually see her in the movies, the books, and even in a ride, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but she lives here at the edge of Diagon Alley, and she's alive, and she breathes fire. I'm so serious. So if you listen really closely, you'll be able to hear some sounds that alert you that she's probably about to breathe some fire. It's really immersive, and it adds to the feeling of being in the Wizarding World. Okay, our next thing that you absolutely have to do, I don't care if you don't think you're gonna like it, you have to do it at least once in your life, and that's grab a butter beer. So you can actually grab a butter beer in either one of the parks, but if you're gonna grab one here in Universal Studios, you're gonna head here to the Fountain of Fair Fortune. Okay, I'm trying to stay out of the rain. Um, I did, whoop, one hit me right in the face. I did go ahead and get a butter beer. Now, I'm normally partial to the frozen. There are four different kinds now. There is a vegan kind, which is a fairly recent addition that they've added this year. There is the cold kind, which is what I got today. The frozen, which is actually my favorite. And then the hot, which is my favorite during Christmas time, which you have to drink fast. Now, I do prefer the frozen. I think it's pretty good. But we've already had our ice cream today, so I thought I would mix it up and grab uh, one of the cold ones. So cheers, friends. I, I do love this. I won't even lie to y'all, I love it. It's sweet, it's butterscotchy. I am still partial, even with this, I am still partial with the frozen. It's just on the sweeter side. It's more of like a dessert drink, but they're really tasty. And if you've never done it, you have to try it at least once. Okay, now our next must do in the wizarding world is you need to escape from Gringotts. Yeah, you're gonna have to escape and you're gonna like it. It sounds weird, but it's true. So Escape from Gringotts is the only Harry Potter ride outside of the train here in Universal Studios and it is an indoor roller coaster that has omni vehicles and a lot of screens and practical effects that take you into Gringotts where you see some characters that you might have to escape from like Voldemort, I don't know, I don't want to spoil it, okay? This ride is so much fun, we have the best time and this is one of those like no matter how many times I get on it, when it ends and you hear the music and the theme song you just kind of like giggle because it's so much fun. This is another one of those rides that also has a great single rider line. So again, if you're willing to split up with your party or if you're by yourself, save yourself some time and hop in the single rider line. It also reminds me a little bit of Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind over in Epcot. Uh, just the way that the vehicles move. It's very cool. Now our final must do here in Diagon Alley is that you have to go watch a wand ceremony. I promise you do. So here at Ollivander's, this is where you can go watch a wand ceremony. So this is when a bunch of people get to go in and someone gets chosen from the crowd to see if they can find their wand. Very much like the first Harry Potter movie when Ollivander helps Harry find his wand. Now this is more of a show aspect where one person gets chosen and you get to see them find out which wand is theirs. And it's not so simple. You don't get to just find one wand and everything's perfect. No, there are a few trials and you see lots of things kind of go wrong on their way to finding the wand that is for them. It is very cool. I've done it several times and I actually was even chosen once. It is a neat experience even if you're not chosen because again it kind of adds to that immersion that we talked about earlier with the dragon. It's just really cool. We all dreamed of going to Hogwarts. We all dreamed of riding the train and we all dreamed of getting our wand. So you, you kind of need to do it. Now there is a lot more exciting stuff to do here in the Wizarding World, like going to see Celestina and the Warbecks. There's some incredible shows out here, which is kind of in that live entertainment that we talked about earlier. Um, but there's a lot of fun stuff. Even just hanging out, going into Nocturne Alley, magic, you can do magic here. But if you have a really limited time or maybe even a limited budget and can't buy a wand or other aspects of things, 
Those are the must-dos for the Wizarding World. We are trying to get over to this little green shack because this is a must-do, friends. So this is the jacket potato stand, which Quincy and I live and breathe and die by. And let me tell you, it smells amazing right now. So this little stand behind me is where you can get jacket potatoes. So if you've never heard of that, essentially it is just a baked potato with loads of goodies on top. They have several different kinds. They have a beans and cheese. They have a shepherd's pie jacket potato. They have just a regular baked potato with cheese and some sour cream. Um, they also have broccoli cheddar. So when Quincy and I first became really good friends and we would come here, she would tell me, oh, you gotta get these jacket potatoes. And every time I was like, it's 100 degrees. Why would I want a baked potato in the middle of the summer? And then we had one. And I was like, oh. That's why. They are so tasty and weirdly, they're really, really heavy. But if you're looking to save some cash or you wanna share with people, they're a great, great option. They're just tasty, they're comfort food. And the shepherd's pie is definitely my favorite with all the meat and vegetables. It is easily a full meal. And when you're eating a lot or if you're really busy, sometimes those prices can rack up. But these aren't that bad, especially if you're sharing. Quincy and I get them a lot and if you couldn't tell by the crowd outside when we were walking past other people really like them too if you want to see a full review of all of them you can actually go check out our eat everything in harry potter world up on the channel right now where we actually review all of them so you can pick your favorite now that's our last little bit here in london um it's been a lot of fun but we've got to keep going and sadly i think something's wrong with like the planet and we've got to save it i don't know and i'll stop the voices too so That'll be nice for some of you. So I don't know if you knew this, but you actually have to save the universe um, here in Universal. That is a must do that you have to do. This is Men in Black Alien Attack, and it is a shooting game where you find out if you have what it takes to become one of the Men in Black. So this ride is kind of like a step back in time, back to the 90s, back to the era of Men in Black. It is so much fun, and it's different from other shooting games in the sense that it's kind of like Buzz Lightyear over at Disney World. Um, it's kind of on a stationary thing. It's, it's easier, I will say, honestly, it's a little bit easier, more kiddo friendly. This one, it's hard. I am not that good at this one. Quincy is really good. She beats me almost every time except in our secret to doing Universal one day. I actually won because she taught me one of her secrets. So if you wanna find out what that secret is, go check out that video. Um, it is so much fun though, every single time I enjoy it. And you kind of notice new things every time because there's so much going on in the game. Now, I don't think I do have what it takes to be um, a man in black, although I look, I look nice in a suit. I do like that. Um, but I don't think I have what it takes. I'll be totally transparent with you guys. If you guys have what it takes, let me know, because I'd like more secrets. Quincy's the only one who has good secrets, so let me know. So we've saved the world, we've been wizards, there's a lot of stuff we've been doing today, but now it's time to head over to Springfield and become a Simpsons family member, in a way. So we have made our way over to Simpsons Land, which is Springfield. There is a lot of fun stuff to do over here. There is the Simpsons Ride, which although fun is actually not on our must-do list right now. Um, there are carnival games through here. You can even see a lot of your favorite places from the Simpsons show. But there are two main must-dos that I really think if you're a Simpsons fan or you're just somebody coming to the park, you should do. So one of those things that we think you actually really need to do when you're taking your visit to Springfield is grab a beer with Duff. Here at Duff Beer Garden, there is a lot of fun stuff that you can do and frankly, Quincy and I just enjoy it over here. So over here in the beer garden, there is honestly quite a bit to do and that's enjoy your time with your friends and grab a good drink. You can grab the Duff beer from The Simpsons Show and you can grab a Duff light beer. And even if you are not a beer drinker like me, this is a full bar. And the reason we like it so much is because this is a great place to just kind of chill out and relax. They have some bites like pretzel here as well and on pretty days this is a great place to come sit by the water and just take a good break when you've had a long day at Universal. Quincy and I love to do this thing that we call Tom Sawyer Islanding and that's when you kind of hit that 3 4 p.m. crash you get really tired and you need a place just to crash and you know think about life. We do that a lot. We find a lot of places to do that. And this is one of our favorite places to do that. They also have signs up for Oktoberfest, which is a lot of fun. Um, and it's just, it's a good time, good vibes. And they have corn dogs as well. And the reason we think this is for everyone is you don't have to know the shows. You don't have to know the characters to just enjoy spending time with your family and friends, grabbing a drink and taking a nice break. After you've had your beer and you've relaxed with your friends, I think the next thing that you need to do is grab one of the Lard Lad Donuts. 
So if you have ever seen The Simpsons, or even if you're just kind of familiar with them, you might recognize the lard lad here and his famous pink donuts. And these are actually sold here in Universal. They are massive, easily shareable, and super, super sweet. I really, really love these donuts. They kind of remind me of Joffrey's donuts. They make a great quick breakfast if you like a sweet breakfast. And again, even if you don't really know anything about The Simpsons, kind of like rides, you don't have to know the IP to have a good time. You don't have to know The Simpsons to enjoy a donut. Also, I love the tacos here. That's just an Emma tip. So if you're coming to Universal and you're not helping E.T., then you're not getting in all those must-dos because you kind of have to go help E.T. So here kind of in the back corner of Universal is where you're going to find the previously known as Kid Zone, which is being redone right now. Um, we actually don't have a lot of details on what this is becoming officially, but you can be sure that allears.net will let you know as soon as we hear anything. Um, but the one thing that has stayed back here in the previous named Kid Zone is E.T. the Ride. So here we are. This is E.T. Adventure, the E.T. themed ride that has been here for quite a few years. And it's a little fun. It's a little weird. And frankly, we think it's a must do. Now this ride is kind of reminiscent of um, the Peter Pan ride over in Magic Kingdom. You go on the bikes with E.T., you are high flying over the city, and he actually takes you to his home planet because sadly his home planet is dying and they need E.T.'s help to save it. You see a lot of E.T.'s friends, it honestly gets a little weird, and at the end E.T. tries to say your name. It is so much fun and it's a classic here at Universal. Now lately the wait times have been pretty high because this area, you know, had a lot more for kiddos. There's a lot less during construction. So this wait time has been a little bit higher than in the past. If it is over like 40 minutes, even that's kind of pushing it. We don't think that this is a must do. Just kind of be aware of how much time you have left, what your priorities are and all that good jazz. But if you have the time for it, ET is so much fun and a classic and I think I'm gonna hop on. Yeah, it's as fun as I think it is. It's really relaxing, it's really chill. ET is there, what more can you ask for? And he says your name in a weird way, Emma. Like that's how he sounds. And he doesn't always say it, but he tries. And that's what I really respect about him. Now during the reconstruction you can still meet characters back here. For example, this is Kitty Softpaws and Puss in Boots. They are back here. You can find Shrek and Fiona back here. Um, so you can still see a lot of your favorites. Of course, when that new area opens, they will be moved. But nonetheless, you can still meet them if you're nervous about not being able to see some of your favorite characters. So as we wrap up our list, I am here to tell you about one of my favorite things. And I honestly can tell you I never thought I would say that. This has made me question who I am as a person because I like this so much, but that's the Bourne Stuntacular. I love this. I love you, Jason Bourne. I never thought I'd say that. This is the Bourne Stuntacular. This is a stunt show where you are helping find Jason Bourne. It's like kind of an entire storyline. It's like a mini movie. The stunts are incredible. The It's like you're watching it on film. Like it feels like you're actually in the movie. They even do camera angles at one point. I can't, I don't even really know how to describe this well to you friends. Like the best way I can describe this is that this puts you in the world of Jason Bourne. That's how it feels. It is an incredible stunt show. There are times that Quincy and I look at each other during the show and we're like, how are they doing that? And I don't ever want to know because I think it's so good. The shows here at Universal are just criminally underrated in my opinion, this one in particular. And out of all the things to do in Universal, I know shows probably are not super high on your list, but this is a great place to take a break. There's air conditioning and it's just cool. Literally watched this yesterday with Quincy and said to her, oh, this is really great. I really like it, da da da. Got home, was talking to my husband and I was like, I really wanna watch the Jason Bourne movies. And he literally looked at me and said, who are you? And I think that that says everything you need to know about me and the Jason Bourne Stuntacular. Now, as we are wrapping up our list, I feel like I would be doing you a disservice if I did not tell you that you have to come to Universal during the holidays. That is one of my favorite must-dos and it's my favorite time to be here at Universal. Universal does some incredible holiday theming, decor, and just specialty items, I guess I could say. They do special shows, they do special events. We are here at the time of Halloween Horror Nights, which I actually recently went to for the first time, but it's not just Halloween Horror Nights, even though that is probably what they're most famous for. 
So outside of Horror Nights, they also do tons of Christmas stuff where they do um, the Grinch comes. You can meet the real live Grinch and it's actually crazy because I think that's really him. They do an entire Christmas pageant all about uh, the Grinch who stole Christmas. They have specialty food. They have Mardi Gras. That's another celebration that they do that is incredible. Quincy and I love Mardi Gras. It is so much fun. And honestly, the Mardi Gras festival that they do here, we think rivals Epcot's best festival food. They are just incredible and they're really underrated. Universal has some amazing holiday offerings that I think if you're missing out on those, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice. Now, if you are curious about it, we have videos about all of the holidays up on the channel now, but if you wanna go see the current one and the most recent video, you can go check out our Halloween Horror Nights 2023 video where I'm scared for my life. And honestly, watching it back, I'm scared to watch it back, but it's also very funny. So go enjoy my fear. And while there is tons to do here inside the park that we didn't even get to touch on, because again, we're talking priorities today, weirdly, our last one is outside of the park. Now our last must do here at Universal Studios is actually kind of outside the park, and that's that you need and you must enjoy City Walk. So City Walk is comparable to Disney Springs. This is Universal's shopping and dining area. And even though it's a little bit smaller than Disney Springs, it still has just as much fun. They have things like the cowfish, voodoo donuts. Weirdly, I'm in love with Menchie's, Margaritaville. There's a lot of places that you can eat and enjoy your time at um, after the parks have even closed. Quincy and I in particular love cowfish. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. And after a certain time, parking becomes free for City Walk. So even if you don't wanna do a full park day here and you're just looking to save some cash but have a good time you can come over to city walk city walk is really a great place to grab dinner on your way out of the parks if you're trying to maximize your full park day but you still want to grab dinner here at universal and they even have a lot of live entertainment they have a karaoke bar they have a lot more bars um, some more nightlife entertainment as well especially if you are adults that are here at universal without your kiddos or if you just want to come have a good time okay friends so that is it that is our 20 must do's here for universal studios florida thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today let me know what your favorite must do's are don't forget to like and subscribe and now go watch my full universal ride challenge up on the channel right now i'll see you there